think of desert climates, usually we think dry and hot. And most of the time, that's true. But areas like the Yucca Valley in California's Mojave Desert are also susceptible to flash floods. And in February of 2019, Thomas Mallon found out just how quickly that desert weather can turn and leave you in a fight for your life. Located between the San Bernardino Mountains and Joshua Tree National Park lies the community of Yucca Valley. With its mountain views and natural beauty, Yucca Valley appeals to people of all ages. 85-year-old Thomas Mellon has lived here for 37 years. Yucca Valley is a fantastic place to live. It really is. I love it here. The climate is great. I mean, there's so many things to do. You have all the water sports that are yeah, in the mountain areas. You have all the outdoor stuff, uh, motorcycles, quads, just a whole bunch of things. But in the winter months, you also have something else, volatile weather. We can get some pretty good downpours, and if we get the heavy winter storms that come through, we can have flash flooding. But local agencies always keep a watchful eye when the storms roll in. Every time we look at the weather and we see a cell or pattern start to, to build that we anticipate an event like that, we pre-plan. We put dive team members in place. Many agencies, especially those in areas prone to flash floods, have first responders specially trained in swift water rescue. And they put their lives on the line in every rescue mission. In February of 2019, both the sheriff and firefighters in the Yucca Valley knew that there was a strong chance for flash flooding. The weather that day was very severe. We had thunder cells in the area that we we're flying to. We had severe winds even getting to that area and heavy rain. But by 5.30 that evening, the storms had mostly passed. The stars were shining. The pavement was dry. I had no thought of any danger because it was, it was a beautiful night after the rain had stopped. With no perceived danger in immediate sight, Thomas got in his car and headed into town to get some dinner. But along the way, the roads began flooding. A highway patrolman directed Thomas and the car ahead of him to make a turn off the road. And the man who was ahead of me, he made the right-hand turn, and I was following his taillight because I wasn't familiar with this part of the Yucca Valley. With the water flowing over the pavement, it was difficult to make out the parameters of the road. Without realizing, both drivers then veered off into a ravine that was now a roaring river. You have no idea of how much power that water has. It can take an 18-wheeler and flip it on its ear. The water was so powerful that both cars were barreling through the river like driftwood. To his horror, he watched the car ahead of him flip over and continue down the ravine. And that is when something happened that most likely saved Thomas's life. I was going rocking along, and then all of a sudden, it stopped. My car stopped, it's like, like I hit something solid. What Thomas didn't realize was that he had hit a slab of cement in the middle of the ditch that stopped his car in its tracks. Now, he faced another problem, though. His car was rapidly filling with near-freezing water, and he had no way to escape. I couldn't get the windows down. I couldn't get the door open because of the water. It was like a stacked deck. Coming up, a daring rescue attempt from a raging flash flood. There were several obstacles where his vehicle was. I was concerned that my rotor blades would be hitting the side of the embankment. But first, another tip that can keep you safe. You may not even know it, and yet depending on where you live, you could be at risk of flooding. In the western U.S., most canyons, small streams, and dry riverbeds are not easily recognizable as a source of danger. But very intense rainfall can produce flooding, even on dry soil. So know your surroundings and listen to the warnings. A safe future starts with you. In February of 2019, flash floods ripped through the desert community of Yucca Valley. Unaware of the dangerous conditions, Thomas Mallon found himself trapped in his car in the middle of a torrential river. I thought to myself, I said, you can die here. This black, muddy water was coming over the top of the car. I felt like I was in a tomb. Thomas was in a literal life or death situation, but fortunately for him, the first responders in the area were already prepped and ready for any emergency that might arise. I was the first one there from the fire department. 
And when I got on scene, the car was in the river. The water was up over the hood. I could see movement inside the vehicle. So we knew we had a rescue. I just kept thinking, wow, you know, he must be panicked, you know, terrified being stuck in that vehicle. Flash floods pose a number of risks aside from just the rushing water. As flood waters gain momentum, they also pick up boulders, logs, and other debris, making rescue attempts extremely dangerous. Firefighters knew that there was no way they were getting to Thomas from the shore. They would have to call in air support from the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department. Their plan? Drop a rescue swimmer from a helicopter down to Thomas and then pull him out. But the mission would not be easy. So there were several obstacles uh, around uh, where his vehicle was. There were some telephone wires and power lines that ran just behind where I wanted to put the helicopter. So with extreme precision, pilot John Anderson hovered the helicopter as rescue swimmer Mark Rios dropped down onto Thomas's car. All right, coming off, Carl. Okay. With no time to lose, Mark broke through the back window and climbed into the car. I had to grab onto him and physically wrestle him out of the vehicle and onto the trunk. I told him, hey, I'm going to have to put this horse collar on you. Hooking in. He's on the move. And with that, Thomas was airlifted to the side of the road where paramedics were waiting. It was inclement weather, very difficult hoist. Everybody did a, a great job. Still, for the rescuers involved, this one went down as one of the most memorable rescues of their careers. This was the most difficult rescue, just because of the dynamics of everything going on. The wind, the rain, the helicopter, the proximity to power lines. Recently, Thomas had a chance to meet and personally thank them all. Thomas, when we arrived on scene, we saw your car and we knew you were in a bad, uh, bad spot. Mm -hmm. That water was almost all the way up to the roof. It was definitely up to the That's windshield. That's right. I can only imagine what you were feeling inside. <laughs> Fear, panic, name it. <laughs> I felt all that. Then I heard you break out that window, and man, I thought, whoa, what, what now? <laughs> you know, I didn't know what, what you were going to do. I didn't know that was the procedure. And then I realized help is here. But anyway, I stayed very calm, and, uh, and I was thinking, boy, thank you, Lord. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I've been wanting to thank you face to face ever since that thing happened. Cars can be replaced, but you, sir, I am so glad we're here and I appreciate the thank you and it means a lot to us.